That's, uh, that's right. It's always good to say what the question is. We want to know this maximum compression of the spring. That's right. said that the spring had a spring constant of k. Usually in the problem, you'll be given any variables that you're supposed to use in your answer. So the problem would probably have told you that the spring has a spring constant of k, because uh, that tells you that you're allowed to use that variable in your answer. So I should have added that to the problem. OK, so now we'll have to do some more work on solving that. not allowed to use v4 in our answer because that's a variable we made up. We have to actually use this expression here. So let's see, how can we simplify this uh, a little bit? So, uh, so at this point, um, we could uh, say that this is, uh, so the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of v4 is v. So the first thing we could do is evaluate some of the square roots. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of the v v sub 4 squared would be v sub 4, right? All right, and then that would give us m over k. All right, and then we can plug in the v sub 4. And we get root 2 gh over 4 times square root m over k. Does that look right? Okay, um, if we simplify that a little bit more, we end up with So 2 divides into 4, that gives us 1 half. And then we can combine the square root, root 2 ghm over k. OK. Actually, um, you might check this with your TA, but I think in this course, they don't really require you to simplify the answer. So maybe it's safest just to leave it like this. That way we don't need to worry about making algebra mistakes. OK. All right. Uh, so that would give us our final answer. That's our x. All right, that was a lot of steps, but actually this would be pretty typical for an exam problem. So this would uh, definitely be a good problem to try again on your own. You can see it might take a lot of repetition before you can get through all the steps here um, with confidence. Uh, but now you have that uh, in your notes. And again, in the real test, this could be harder because in the real test, they might not have given all of these sub-questions over here. The real test might have just said A starts at the top, it slides frictionlessly down to the bottom where it, it sticks to B, and then they slide until, until they stick with C. And then the question might just ask, what's the maximum compression of the spring? And then it's our job to split this up into what it was turned out to be one, two, three, four separate questions. So you have to say there's really four different uh, intervals. There's the interval that we're going down the plane. Then there's a very short interval from the instant before the collision to the instant after the collision between A and B. Then there's another short interval between the instant before the collision with object C and the instant after the collision with object C. And then there's the interval between when the spring has just started contracting and when the spring has stopped contracting at the maximum. 
Like I say, um, you're pretty sure to see a question like this on the test, a question that uh, makes you combine conservation of momentum and conservation of energy. So you have to ask for each part which you're going to use. I think the hardest part here is just splitting out into subproblems and seeing what the subproblems are. Uh, but uh, with, with repetition, uh, you can get the hang of that. Any questions? Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So that, that is a lot of steps, but like I say, um, the key is repetition. So if you try that question again, the more time you go through it, the more comfortable you're likely to get with that. So, so basically here we kept using these ideas over here. And we kept working with cases where the net work by the non-conservative forces was zero. So we could just use conservation of energy. Mm -hmm. um, and we just included all the various types of energy that we were, that we were uh, working with there. Okay, okay, all right. So like I say, that's a, that's a, a good typical type of exam problem. So now you have that in your notes. Okay. Um, should I come up with another problem? Is that okay? Okay. That was so much fun. That was good. Yeah. All right. Just to remind you, one of the parts that was trickiest here was to notice that the kinetic energy in situation 5 was zero, right? And that was tricky because we had to see, well, gee, when it's at maximum compression, it must be changing direction. So it has zero speed, so the kinetic energy is zero. That's uh, pretty likely to come up. So we know that when something's changing, uh, change, changing direction, when something's changing direction, we know that its speed is zero. The hard part, though, is the problem doesn't usually say it's explicitly, by the way, the object is changing direction at this point, but it's implied. For example, suppose they ask you for the maximum height that something reaches. Well, when it's at its maximum height, it's changing direction, right? Because it's shifting between going up to going down. Or in this case, if they ask you for the maximum compression, well, at the maximum compression, again, it's changing direction because it's changing from compressing to expanding. So you have to watch for that kind of wording that really means that it's changing direction. <laughs>